Well, we have team coverage tonight. Now, the family of Simran Gordon is calling for the release of security camera video from inside that family dollar store last Wednesday night. Good evening. I'm Doug Emblidge. And I'm Jenny Ryan. The encounter between Gordon and two Rochester police officers was over in less than 30 seconds. Gordon's family on Saturday called for the release of the body-worn camera video. Today, they got it, and we warn you, the video is graphic. The first officer in the door draws his weapon, confronting the suspect behind the counter. Hey, come here. Use your hands. Get your, get your hands out of your pocket. Get your hands out of your, hands out of your pocket. Your hands out of your pocket. Six seconds after the suspect flees down an aisle, shots are fired. Police say five in all. The first, they say, fired by the suspect. The second responding officer encounters the suspect, shot on the floor in the aisle. Hands out now! Drop the gun! Drop it! Tell him to start EMS. Simron Gordon died at the scene. Tonight, Gordon's family is pushing back against the police version of what happened. They say Gordon was murdered, shot by police in the back. 13 Wham's Tyler Brown joins us tonight with reaction from the family, also from members of city council. Tyler? Doug, Jenny, at least five members of city council are defending the officer's actions, but family members and activists say they want to see the unredacted body camera video as well as video from the store. Family members believe what they saw in the video released today was unjust. Five shots are heard in the body camera video. Police say Simron Gordon fired first. But Gordon's family says what they saw in the body-worn video was something different. But after the footage I seen, he was gunned down. It, it wasn't an uh, exchange of fire. It wasn't a shoot-off. It was a complete and total murder. Simron was never shown shooting. The only shooting you saw, the only fire that came was from RPD officers. There was never any return fire. City Council also watched the video prior to it being released to the public. Councilman Jose Peo believes the officers did what was right in the moment. They have to make split decisions, split second decisions in order to decide what's what's the greater good for the people who are there. We had customers there, we had employees there, and we had police officers there all doing the right thing. And this one person that wants to put everybody's lives in danger decides that they, you know, want to put uh, they want to shoot a gun at somebody. It's not right. But the family of Simron Gordon sees this much differently. Police body camera video they don't believe tells the whole story. And this man was shot in the back. They should be able to lay him to rest by now. But right now we're still looking for answers, real answers. The family claims that Gordon was shot in the back. What we don't have right now is the autopsy result to show where Gordon was shot. The family says they have requested to see his body for themselves. Breaking news today, the release of police body camera video of a deadly shooting inside a Rochester family dollar store on Wednesday night. That police body camera video released within the hour, it shows the encounter between police and a robbery suspect at that store on Wednesday evening. Good afternoon, I'm Jenny Ryan. The video is from two police body camera videos and the entire incident unfolds in just 15 seconds. We do want to warn you, it is graphic and violent. 13 Wham's Tyler Brown is live now at the Public Safety Building with details and reaction. Tyler? Yeah, Jenny, the most violent part of this video is when officers fired at their weapons at the suspect. And again, we do want to warn you, some of this video you're about to see may be disturbing to some. Now, in the redacted video, in, in, in the redacted video, it shows when the suspect in the video, Simran Gordon, allegedly pointed a gun at officers hidden in a paper that was hidden in a paper bag. Police say while chasing throughout the aisles of the store, the suspect shot first before officers fired back. The video then details how an officer on scene called EMS 30 seconds after Gordon was struck by gunfire. Members of city council viewed the viewed this video before it was released to the public. Here's what some of them had to say after seeing the video for themselves. They have to make split decisions, split second decisions in order to decide what's what's the greater good for the people who are there. We had customers there, we had employees there, and we had police officers there all doing the right thing. And this one person that wants to put everybody's lives in danger decides that they, you know, want to put 
uh, they want to shoot a gun at somebody. It's not right. And they shouldn't have to make that decision. It's important when there are shootings uh, where officers have, um, have killed someone that we are able to view the video with, you know, transparency to understand what happened. Um, you know, in the past, I think we've just taken the word of the RPD and many times it's proven uh, to actually, once we viewed the footage, to not have happened in the way that it was stated. So I think it's just important. And this just comes three days after advocates and loved ones for the suspect, Zimmer and Gordon, asked for this video to be released and also for blue light video to be released. The incident is still under investigation by the attorney general's office. New video today released of that fatal officer involved shooting at a family dollar store in Rochester. As Natalie Kutchko reports, the footage from the state attorney general's office is different than the edited version released by Rochester Police late yesterday. Natalie? Well, Jenny, the Attorney General's office is investigating the fatal encounter between 24-year-old Simron Gordon and two Rochester police officers. That's by protocol. Now, tonight from the footage, we're learning more about what unfolded after Gordon was shot. I just needed somebody to check his breathing. I had to call. Okay. But I think there's people covering him from there. They're good. I can, we're good. We're good. We gotta just check if he's alive. One week after the deadly officer involved shooting inside the Family Dollar store on West Main Street, the Attorney General's office released two videos from the body worn cameras responding officers were wearing during the incident. The videos are slightly longer versions of the redacted footage released by the RPD Tuesday. Police say 24-year-old Simron Gordon attempted to rob the family dollar around 9.30 p.m. last Wednesday, holding the manager at gunpoint. The video shows the first officer entering the store, drawing his gun and confronting the suspect behind the counter. Moments later, the suspect flees down an aisle and shots are fired. Hands out now! Drop it! Police say five in all, the first shot they say fired by the suspect. Well, the gun secured, but I, just want I don't know if there's anything else on him. He fired one shot at me, too. Where's the gun? Right here. here. Yeah, well, we're not right now. What it's, it's unloaded right now. I can about to check in. I didn't see it. I think four, probably. Four or five. Okay. The video also shows more officers and a paramedic checking on Gordon. The 24-year-old died at the scene. On Wednesday, the Rochester Police Locust Club issued a statement commending the officers for preventing a violent robbery in progress. The head of the Police Accountability Board says RPD should have released raw footage of the body camera video, citing what's called a critical incident video, a practice he says many departments, including RPD, use. The companies that started making critical incident videos, they say that police departments should release the body-worn camera footage separately from these videos. Um, and so the Rochester Police Department has yet to do that. And so my hope is that we can work together to come up with a better process moving forward than releasing videos that aren't just the facts. And it is unclear at this time when the AG's office will finish its investigation. Police have not yet released the names of the officers involved.